Hi, it's Michelle. I have this new pelvic model that I'm still putting together and working on the tensions, but really for you to get much more of a visual. I want to start talking about movement and outer space. Very little knowledge is known about movement or gravity in the human body, right? This is, this is why I wrote the book, You Can't Get to Mars Without Me. Until they change policies that we work with the human body, we are not going to get to Mars. We might get to Mars, we're not coming back. Right? because they're just destroying the human body because they don't understand the organization of movement. The body functions off of organizing. It, it's really that simple. And to have that organization, they have to oppose gravity and with that have rotational responses. So in outer space, you don't have the gravity, you don't have the rotational responses, so the buoyancy is an all-time high. That being said, there's ways of manipulating the human body in outer space, I believe, um, with some of the stuff that I've been working on to sort of tease the brain and the body as if it's going in and out of gravity on a daily basis versus totally leaving gravity. You cannot work with the body, especially in outer space, with non-functional movements. It shows up in special needs, a lot of modalities, the therapies that are out there. It shows up with, with post-operative care, let's say with adults where they have trauma and it shows up substantially in outer space. Muscles don't create movement, they respond to movement. So one of the things we really have to look at is the skeletal system and the articulation. Now, a lot of people get confused with, let's say, reflexes um, in the human body. And the one thing they don't realize is that there are no reflexes in outer space. So, so here's my pelvic model, right? And one of the hardest things to show about all of this too is when you're doing all of this, the pelvic model, this is still mass. Now, you're taught in physics, mass is mass. Well, I'm a living organism, so my mass responds in opposition to gravity. This mass responds succumbing to gravity. So, so that's the biggest, the first big confusion with, with movement that people don't understand, right? So, but when you're working with this, people also think, let's say, balance or standing come from the feet, and it doesn't. The pelvis is really quite interesting that it can withstand any kind of movement that goes through the body, right? I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer. This model is more set up for filming than it is for the phone, but again, we're working on, on, this, on this substance. But anyway, so when I put my purse on, right, my shoulder, the pelvis will automatically feel the dynamics of the weight, the movement, and, and counter response for the load. That's just simple in my purse. And I say simple, boy, I picked up, I've had clients in my office and I go to hand them their purse and I'm like, why did you come here? Like, you've got like 25 pounds in that. Like, what are you carrying around in this thing? But anyway, um, so, but you'll see that if a man has his, his wallet, right in the back pocket. Again, what, what gets looked at is it throws a system off. It doesn't throw the system, the system counter responses, right? So these kind of movements are, are here. But if you look at the pelvis in outer space, right? So there's no walking. So the pelvis isn't getting this kind of movement, right? When, when, you're, when you're coming into this. So like if, if I just go to sit down, right? My pelvis moves around it and my sit bones so even just my jeans being off will will all adjust my my sit bones but there's no sitting in outer space so in outer space you lose all your functional movements you learn you lose all your developmental movements so meaning that there's no developmental milestones there's no sitting there's no standing there's, no, there's none of that so all of that has to take into consideration that the pelvis look at this this is me getting in and out of the car, what my pelvis needs to do to get in and out of the car. Now, as I get older, people think getting out of the car is grabbing the legs and going this way. You know what I mean? And then you hear the, ugh. You know, if I'm hearing, ugh, you know, the breath has left the variations for movements. But even that, there's no breathing in outer space. Most people don't realize that even just that exhale that's going on. All of those things have to be modified into, in a sense, exercises into outer space for the human body to prevail. The human body organizes off of all these movements. So that's why, you know, again, if you're, 
you're riding a skateboard, right? Look, look at that balance that needs to be done. Roller skating, right? Now you might be saying, ah, last time I roller skated, but for me it was about four months ago. So, you know what I mean? Like it, it just, all of that kind of stuff, swinging, the, the, the use of the pubic bone in with the sit bones, right? And that's, that's again, getting out of bed in the morning, but look at the counter responses. Right? This is the biggest problem with stroke and CP, but also an astronaut coming back from outer space. They've lost the ability to wag their tail. Just that little movement. So all of these kind of considerations have to be played for in um, our space program uh, for us to succeed. Right? We're spending a lot of money on rockets, guys, but we're not working on the human body. But to understand the human body, that this also functions here on Earth. A lot of people say, yeah, I, lady, I can walk down the hallway. Well, you're lucky. You know, you shouldn't think about work walking down the hallway. But someone who's just had a stroke or a car accident, all of a sudden walking down the hallway might be the biggest goal in their life. But it's also a goal for an astronaut returning. What do they do? They, I've seen the astronauts, they blindfold him and they have five guys around them and this is supposed to, to you know, articulate balance. No, the first thing that goes in outer space is the skeletal articulation. The, the body's ability to collect oxygen and then have this counter responses, right? And this is where reflexes come from in babies. People think that reflexes is a patterning. No, it's not. It's not some lizard movements. It's just the first time, let's say, that the hip is gone against gravity um, coming out of the womb and so forth. And that's, that, that oxygen collection, which doesn't happen in the womb, goes into the bones, right? And that's where you start getting these kind of little movements in babies. That's why I'm a big advocate, you don't swaddle babies. And people go, why, everybody does it. Well, as your mom used to say, if everybody used to, you know, if Johnny jumped off the bridge, would you go too? You know what I mean? Like you don't, you know, people go, all oh, the swaddling brings back that womb experience. The baby's now out of the womb. Three major things that, that happen, happen around elimination. I, I eliminate and intake oxygen, and I eliminate and intake food, and I eliminate and intake all my, my, my circulatories. I conclude lymphatics and all that sort of stuff because now we're doing it against gravity versus an amniotic fluid. Learn about the human body, learn about movement, but all of these movement considerations need to be in the space program, guys, and we're getting really close to going to the moon, and we're getting really close to starting to destroy some human bodies. We need to become multiplanetary, and to do that, we know have to know about functional movement and the way the system organizes for movement. Thank you.